All right, well, let's take a look at uh, some of these mirrors. I wanted to give you an idea of what you're getting um, with each of the different levels. So this is a D mirror, a level D mirror. This is a two inch. It just has the reflection of the bottom, whatever the, the bottom of the mold looked like. And then this is the top, and the top can be really varied. Um, you can have it burnt sort of more of a black color. Um, sometimes you get this rainbow pattern showing up. And then in others, you can end up with a, a really silvery pattern. It just kind of depends. Now, sometimes as I start working it, as you wash off and rinse and wash off and rinse, this will go away. So this is not permanent if uh, you're hoping it will be. As soon as you start grinding and working on it, um, that will probably all disappear pretty quickly. The Here's a 4-inch. Um, this is the back on a 4-inch. Um, and you can see, I'll try to get the reflections just right on this. Um, just different variations in the in the pattern here, and this is due to this is due to the way the um, molten metal hits the mold, and so it starts cooling off. You can see where it hit here; it started cooling off. Little beads start rolling away. Um, so when I tell you you're going to have to grind for a sixteenth to a thirty-second of an inch, you're going to have to grind through this quite a bit in order to remove all of these blemishes to get to flat uh, metal. And then on the back side, if you decide to grind the back side also and grind it flat, you're probably going to have to grind substantially more. This is a really nice smooth surface, but sometimes um, they can be quite varied. Here's the five inch. Oh, the five inch mirror. This one, again, uh, has sort of that same pattern as that four inch. There's no real particular reason this one looks that way. Then here you can see these light rings. This is where the pour started and it started pouring out. A bead cooled off over here, started cooling off over here. Um, so it takes a while to sand through all that. So expect to have to be pretty aggressive um, initially. You're going to have to be gently aggressive initially. This uh, this feels like a, well, feels like bronze. It feels like you could throw this at a Prius and, and cut it in half, and you probably actually could. It weighs a ton, but it's as breakable as glass. So look at the other video. You can see uh, me tapping it with a hammer and watching it shatter. If the tin's too high, it shatters really easy. Um, these have the right mix of tin, and so they, they can take a lot more abuse, but you really got to treat them like uh, glass. The number one problem that people have when they pick this one up off the desk is they treat it like a big chunk of metal and not like a very fragile piece of glass. All right, so here's uh, that. Those were all A's or um, D mirrors. Here is a C mirror where I've left the back in place but I've ground one side flat. And what this allows me to do is I grind until there's no more little bubbles in this mirror. Um, and I just grind down and you'll see it, you know, as you start grinding down through that, you'll start seeing the bubbles as you work through um, these little divots, you'll grind it flat and that little divot will be left and there's a pretty good divot there. So you're gonna have to grind a ways to get through that divot. Um, once I get through that and get to clean metal and it looks like it's a good mirror, then I sell it. This mirror had a little bit of a, a overlap on the mold so I can ground that off on the edge. Um, so you have a, a beveled edge there. Here's a four inch mirror. This one is a particularly shiny one and you can see it's it's really textured. You're going to have to sand all the way through that to get past that texturing. So it's going to take you a while if you want to do the backside flat. If you're going to do just the, the front side and leave the backside natural, which really speaks to the history of these pieces. It's really, really cool. Um, so I'd really like to leave them natural. I mean, it, it really shows off the history of the mirror. The problem is you're going to have to use a water pick and clean this each time you swap grits because you talk about the contaminator, this thing contaminates. Um, on this side, then I, I ground this one to 80 grit and you're going to have to start at 80 grit because this is still much rougher than any plate glass you've ever worked. So you're going to start with 80 grit and then work your way through. Um, I think on one of the pages I recommended spending maybe twice the amount of time on 80 grit. You might not have to do that. Once you get this all consistently to 80 grit, then it should be uh, the same grinding speed as the others uh, of other mirrors that you've done. Here is a B mirror. So I wanted both sides flat. So the day you got it, it behaved much more like a uh, typical glass blank. And so if you get one of the B mirrors, both sides will be ground flat. Um, they're more expensive. Grinding one side is pretty easy. Grinding this back side is just an enormous pain. Um, so they're a little more expensive to get through. The thing I like about the B mirrors is I can quality check both sides. So that's what a B mirror looks like. Um, they're not all the same thickness. These are all hand poured. These are all hand ground. Um, really, really, really cool mirrors. 
And then we have the A. This is the D mirror. Um, the D mirror. This is a five inch uh, A mirror. And this particular one, I, uh, as I was grinding it, I decided to grind the back flat just a little bit. And this one's actually up for sale. Um, so it has a little bit of grinding on the edge. I wanted it flat so I could do a better job uh, flattening this side. But it's just an amazing mirror. <laughs> really, really just a cool piece of history. So you have D mirrors right out of the mold. This is what Newton would have started with. So if you really want to start from really the coolest place possible, this would be the, the mirrors to choose, any of the D levels, the 2-inch, 4-inch, or 5-inch. These are C level. The back is rough, um, still looks just like it came out of the mold. The front, I've been able to do a little bit more quality control checking and sanding, of, and, uh, sanding it down to 80 grit, making it flat. The B level mirrors um, have been sanded on both sides, so they're ready to go the moment you get them. And then the A mirrors, uh, the nice thing about the A mirror is they're really ready to go if you want to use them uh, as a gift or keep them on your desk, which is where this one stays on my desk. Uh, if you want to start grinding, they really allow me to quality control the mirror. Uh, and I'll rotate this and you can see you know, what's up on my bookshelf. You can read the, the titles of the books. Uh, they're just an amazing mirror. Just, just really, really, really cool. So those are the mirrors. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email at bdelder42 at gmail.com. I will be happy to answer them. I don't know how many more mirrors I'm going to make. Um, <laughs> this is just an enormous amount of time. But they're really, really, really cool pieces of history. These, this is the mirror that changed the world. And uh, it's, it's worth having. It was just, just neat. But uh, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to make these. So I don't know how many more I'll make. Um, but if you have questions, shoot me an email. Thank you very much.